We are very blessed today. That we, hey, listen, you've been here when we've had Cowboy Tony. We got, you know, uh, te- Texas Tony. But now we got Reverend Tony. Here. <laughs> None better, former company MVP at the National Convention. He's still an MVP in my book. Please help me welcome the great Tony Stevens. <laughs> How y'all doing? I didn't know how we start because uh, I think Craig was supposed to begin. So I said, Josh, you open it up. And he don't know what he's doing either. So I guess ah. we just got kind of <laughs> <laughs> He just called me. He's running a few minutes later. A few minutes later. All right, good. How y'all doing this morning? Great. Good. I uh, spoke to Bill uh, a few weeks ago and he wanted me to come by and uh, do the uh, Central Club this morning. So I'm really excited about being here again. You know, um, you know, a lot of times, you, you guys excited about the opportunity that's going on in Prime America right now? Yes. yes. I was talking to uh, uh, Dwayne Morrow a few weeks ago, and Dwayne is at the top of the top. And to see the genuine enthusiasm in his eyes and the excitement about what's going on here in Prime America, you can be in the right place at the right time, and you can miss it. And so I hope if you're here right now, Prime America has transformed from a six-figure opportunity to a seven-figure opportunity. Right. Mm-hmm. And you can be on history stage and not recognize the moment and walk off. You see, in any transition in history, there were a lot of folk around. Some got involved and some didn't. And so here, you know, uh, a few uh, months ago, I was with my uh, uh, nephews who we went over to... Uh, to Disney, and we had a great time there. You know, adults are children of a larger growth, and you'll see a lot of lessons you learn from kids that you know you most learn most things you need to know in kindergarten. And uh, we got to Disney, and so you know, you know, a typical kid, you get up in the morning, say, look at guys, I need y'all to uh, go take a bath. Who's gonna go first, uh, Kevin or Jay? We took a bath yesterday. Okay, well, I understand. All right, new day, all right? Who's going to bathe first? So then they went and took a bath and went out on the park. And uh, we came back. I said, now, who's going to take a bath first? Kevin, you or Jay? We took a bath this morning. I fine, you stink. Who's going to bathe first? <laughs> Because y'all not going to go around with me smelling like y'all been wrestling a bear all day. No, go take a bath. And so he went on park again and came back. I said, hey, who's going to take a bath first? Again! I said, look at God. This room is too small for me to smell y'all all night. Who's going to bathe first? And uh, they got home and told my mom. See, Mom, we had, me and Mom, we had a great time. But Uncle Tony made us take three baths in one day. <laughs> and see, we all can identify with that. We've all been kids in our, at one time in our life. And someone had to arousal us to go bathe. And, and you didn't really begin to see the true need of it until you became mature. And you became an adult. And you started being around other adults and you started noticing guys started noticing girls were alive. Now you're going to get bathed and put some cologne on. And when the guys recognize the boys, they're going to perfume on, they're going to get cute and fixed up too. Because you understand the importance of hygiene. And now, this body that God has given us is obvious. You know, you got to groom it, you comb the hair, you brush the teeth, you uh, uh, bathe it, and you exercise it. You take care of this body. And what you uh, cherish, you take care of. You don't have a car that you wash once a year. Well, you shouldn't. <laughs> you're going to maintain your vehicle. You don't have a house. You don't uh, wash, have dishes. You'll never wash. You manage. You take care of it. And, but the most important things are the invisible things. 
See, you don't see your mind. You see the manifestations of what you're thinking. But it's obvious to neglect bathing your mind in optimism. And we go around with a bunch of stinking thinking. That's why you get folk come to the uh, Prime America. So I've been to a uh, uh, hot meeting last week. Why well, gotta come again? Because you stink mentally. <laughs> God's word says, forsake not the assembling together yourself. Why do you think, uh, well, I was at the Potter's house many years ago, and I'm, I'm sitting up on the balcony, and there are many thousand folk coming, and I'm watching the crowd migrate in. And the question went in my mind, why was it so important that God said, forsake not the assembling together yourself? You hear the same sermon every week. Are very similar. But why is it important to not just uh, list it on the radio? Why is it important to come in? Because you got to come get immersion. Now, uh, in, when, in mental, you find no CEOs. There is not a CEO that wins big. They don't have good mental hygiene. There has to be optimism. You enjoy going around Pat. Uh, Josh and the people that win the most and Bill the the guys win the most they're mo normally most optimistic you don't go around because negative stinking thinking is repelling no, no different than your physical hygiene if you're around somebody and they, they don't smell fresh you don't cuddle up to them <laughs> now if you go to the gym and you go to the gym you go work out and you got a bunch of your friends, y'all work out together? And you guys, before you go bathe, y'all sit in the corner, everybody stinks, y'all roll together. <laughs> but if you go bathe and they don't, you want to put them out of the car. Because <laughs> obvious, y'all stink. And see, if you're riding around with a lot of mentally musty people, <laughs> <laughs> and you're okay with that, because you're mentally musty also. <laughs> you got to come and bathe yourself in optimism. And you, you come uh, here to, I, I was in Atlanta, Georgia a few weeks ago. And you got guys making six and seven figures. And they shut their whole business down. And travel across the country for three days. We're going to talk about buy a term and invest the difference. You can make a lot of money in private America, and everyone is there and make a lot of money in private America. That's obvious. You don't tell me what I already know. I'm living it. And uh, private America is a great opportunity. We know all these things. So why is it important to shut our businesses down and drive there and sit there and have a spa treatment and optimism? Mm -hmm. And when you leave, you're all excited and pumped and refreshed again because you're mentally fresh. Why does the company shut down once every two years? Shut the whole company down. And let's all go to one location for four or five days and just immersion and optimism. And they pray speaker after speaker after speaker to share optimism with them. I know we uh, spoke at the convention many years ago and, and uh, we had a uh, conference call with John Addison because it's, it's Saturday night we're going to speak and John said, look at guys, we're putting the company in your hands because we spend all these millions on this convention and the last voice that these folk would hear is your voice. So if you say something stupid, <laughs> we can't fix it. <laughs> You can, you can make everyone go from optimism to pessimism because you can't fix your last words. Your job is to send them off in optimism. And here we come to in Prime America. And sometimes we come here and you want to come to Prime America and you miss the fundamental. So a lot of folk never build a big here because they're running around with bad mental hygiene. You go down to any large city, you go downtown, and you go to any bathroom, you're going to see a common thing. Because a homeless will come inside of that bathroom. And there is no tub in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. It's a place to do just basic stuff, not bathing stuff. But they'll come and they'll make it 
a room that they want to bathe in, so they'll do what's called a monkey bath. <laughs> a monkey bath is this. Monkey got a long arm. <laughs> so he'll do this, wash right here. He'll wash right here. And he'll wash right there. <laughs> but when he does that, the rest of the body stinks. Because your skin dies. So there's a scent that goes with that. So you can tell when someone's been taking a monkey bath. There's a stench. And sometimes you can come in prime America. You get caught up in taking business monkey bath. When you come to the op meeting, that's a place of immersion. So you can go and take a bath mentally. When I was in school, we would play football and we leave the field. Coach's last statement, go to the shower. They didn't say go to class. Go to, to the shower because y'all stink. You go in the shower, you go, you get immersed. Everyone bathe, come out, and you smell fresh. You're ready to roll. He didn't say go take a monkey bath. He said, y'all go to shower. And so here, if you don't come to our meeting, you don't come to training, <coughs> you're guilty of taking a monkey bath. And you find a homeless and normally broke. Normally broke. You don't find you you don't find wealthy homeless people. They take monkey baths. So you don't find no wealthy RVPs taking monkey bath. They show up, pass at every meeting, josh at every meeting, they go and get immersion. Go to every convention, every fast star school, that's a spa treatment. And so if you want folks to come here and begin to build a business, you got to get folk to come and come into an immersion. They got to show up. And, they, and when they come here, they come as business infants. They have the same question you're, you're saving your, kid, your kids have. Why got to take a bath? Why got to come to I mean, I came last week. See, you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth. But there is a maintenance that goes on all day. You'll take your chew gum. I see a lot of mouths moving right now. Y'all ain't talking to chewing gum, right? <laughs> That's a key, good breath hygiene, all right? Or you have mints you pop in, all right? You don't want to be in nobody's face and you, you know, you're chasing them off. Because it's repelling. So as an adult, you have a responsibility to manage good hygiene. And so when you get in your car, you listen to CDs and optimistic things, that's managing your mental <coughs> breath, your ideas. And you got to be on that. You just don't do it one time and it's done. And with my nephews, it, it didn't matter if they took a bath three times, four times, or ten times. The goal is hygiene. That's the goal. So you got to ask yourself. See, when you see a coach, now he's got my mentioned a minute ago when we left the football field, he said, you guys, you all go to the shower. Because he's over a team of folk going to the shower. You can't win in isolation. He ain't out on the field by himself. He recruits a team of folk to go so we can all go in there. So when you go to the op meeting, are you going as a coach or an individual? The coach takes everybody. So how many folks showing up with you to the op meeting? If you buy yourself, that's a good start. But this is a life's a team sport. And you can't win a team sport as an individual. So how many folks are going to you with you to the fast star schools? That's a spa treatment. And when folks come to the uh, fast star schools, they leave there. I, I've been to fast star schools. And I see people there. They're outside smoking a cigarette by 80 or 90 percent of the time. But you come back to the meeting and say, what'd you get? Man, it changed my life. It changed my life. Because the steam of the shower got them feeling good also. (laughs) (laughs) 
I don't care what you do to get somebody to come to a, a fast art school live meeting. When they leave there, they're optimistic. But in our office, we got a gym in our office, and guys come there, you know, and uh, they will do meetings in the morning. Then some will go work out. Now you can't say oh, I took a shower this morning and you just worked out. You just voided out that shower. Yeah. Now you gotta take another shower. <laughs> so when you go, you have someone come to not me. And they go see the silly cousin. And he sprinkles her mind with doubt and fear. They get mentally musty. You gotta encourage them. That's why you do a conference call during the week. You do certain other things, you call them, you encourage them because they get mentally musty. It's about managing the mental hygiene. And there's, if you want to win a, bin, a business here, Glenn Williams did a smart thing. Uh, we were at the convention when he first took over. He said, everybody, I want you guys to text me your uh, unreasonable goal. And y'all thought it was about that. But it wasn't. It was about, he wanted everybody's phone number. Now I got everybody's phone number. Now I'm going to send you guys a text. So y'all get mentally musty, listen to this conference call. Because y'all all, y'all give me y'all's phone number. So tell you what, y'all, they were always, they were sort of texting. Y'all, I don't know, they said, sit in silence. Text an unreasonable goal. Now, guys, 60,000 phone numbers <laughs> on a database. I'm going to send out a text. We have a conference call. You're mentally musty this morning. Jump on. <laughs> <laughs> to keep you encouraged. And so, if you want to win here, ask. Look at your neighbor. Say, what's your mental hygiene like? <laughs> and if it's bad, go take a mental shower. Right now is about shower. We're all here to get mentally refreshed. That's right. That's right. So here, I know everyone in this room here, your goal is to build something. But you'll never attract people if you're physically musty. They're not going to stay with you long. Try it. So if you're mentally musty, nobody's going to stay with you long. So if you're not getting people to stay with you, ask yourself, what's my mental hygiene like? Am I negative? Am I making sure I'm getting to the shower every week? Am I making sure I keep some breath, mental breath mints? I got in my car and listen to optimistic things? If you're not, you're probably repelling people. I've never been around Sneak and I've been positive. Me Because she, she managed mental hygiene. You're reading books all the time, listening to CDs all the time, always managing mental hygiene. And so if you're going to win here, do that. And so what happens here, when you look at Prime America, there's a value proposition that you always look at. When you look at uh, uh, the company, and you're involved in anything, you got to ask yourself, what's the overall goal of the company? When you figure that goal, their intent, now make yourself useful there. So what's the goal? What's the goal of McDonald's? They want everybody to eat their sandwiches. A nice, fast food environment. So all the employees, their value proposition is, I'll come here. And the goal is make all the clients come in feel nice. You talk at McDonald's and the right manager, right? Good morning. And they send things to make you feel good. So the, the key that's valuable there, they embrace him the most. He's more like a, a raise. So what's the goal? The goal is to make sure everyone eat their sandwiches. What's the goal of Starbucks? I want you to make sure everyone enjoy their drinks, good set down environment. So what's the goal of Prime America? 
Prime America's goal is want everybody to own our insurance, our investment, <coughs> and our financial services product. Now, so if that is the goal, ask yourself, are you valuable there? Are you a client? That's the first step toward being valuable. Are you a client? If the goal is to ensure America, ask yourself, are you a client? And the insurance and investments, the things that Prime America evangelizes, are you a client? Then if I'm a client, then how do I increase my value? Are my friends and family, are they clients? And the more I bring value to the overall goal, because Prime America's goal is product, Placement. That's the goal. Now, who's here for the first time? How long have you been in the business, brother? Two weeks. Two weeks. Can you help me out? Sure. We ain't gonna raffle. Come here, fuck. How old are you, brother? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Pretty healthy. I'd say so. Pick that chair up. How you doing? Okay. Now put your hands in your pocket. Now pick it up. No. Pick it up. Just, no, get in. Okay, just relax. Okay, I'm just saying that. Just relax. I'm just saying, I'm gonna pick it up. Put it down. Put my hands in my pocket. You don't want to see this, though. I'm from Terrell, Texas, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, young man, how you going to buy me to do it now, right? Mm -hmm. See, you never get wealthy with your hands and your back. Mm -hmm. Get wealthy with your ideas. <laughs> Thought rules the world. So the goal is to get the chair picked up. You know, table, sister, my hand is kind of hot. Right? Keep that chair up a little bit. <laughs> see, you thought it was your strength, didn't you? <laughs> 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 See, God is a spirit. God gets his will done through men. When you pray for yourself, God gets you as other folks' hand to do it through them. You go to McDonald's. The owner's not there. His goal is to have the food served through somebody. So how do you get it done? Thank you, brother. Give me a hand, Brian. Now, there is a goal of McDonald's to serve, get everyone to eat their sandwiches. So you find what the company wants and make yourself more useful and valuable there. Now, the franchisee wants everyone to eat their belly full of their sandwiches. So if you're an employee, you make yourself useful, then you're valuable to him. So what's the overall company strategy? They want to grow and develop a well-trained team. So the overall McDonald's Corporation, they want outlets. So they got outlets. Their goal is to open up more outlets. Right. And so the owner, franchise guys, I'll make myself useful there in the strategy, not just the goal. So if you want to win in Prime America, you can spend your whole life working on the goal, being the best salesperson, and you are selling insurance and you're doing that, that goal is right. You'll make money with the goal. You get wealthy with the strategy. That's right. right. That's right. Because the strategy, now you got leaders over up outlets. You go to McDonald's. You say, where is the owner? He's probably not there. Because he's connected to the corporation. He understands the strategy of opening up outlets. Now all the employees are focused on the goal of selling the burgers and the sandwiches. That's right. You'll make a living on the goal. You get wealthy with the strategy. Mm -hmm. And so ask yourself, in Prime America, are you more focused on the goal or are you dealing with the strategy? Right. You go to, I was talking to Dwayne Morrow uh, a few weeks ago. So, how do you remember folk names so well, right? Said so Tony, well, you know, people that are involved know their name pretty well, right? Now, he knows all RBPs, most of RBPs' names. Because those guys are focused on the strategy. 
He don't know very many PFA names because they're focused on the goal. Right. But you can't have the strategy without the goal. So if I am serious about evangelizing McDonald's, I'm serious about evangelizing Prime America, do I do it better by just doing the goal? I can go to McDonald's. You don't go to McDonald's and say, I'm going to be the best burger cook. I'm going to get the best burgers cooked. So if you can win through others. So if you're not RVP yet, then you're more soaked in the goal. Mm. You ain't got your mind on the strategy. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get well if you get your mind focused on the strategy and not the goal. And what happens is you get wealthy in prime America when you got the strategy down. <laughs> the only place you know about all the RVPs is that RVP. Once you get to the strategy, now you can start getting wealthy. On the goal, you make a little money. Who's got RVP in here? See, y'all making money, all right? But you ain't getting wealthy yet. Now, my bonus three months ago was $22,000 in one month, all right? Because that's a strategy. <laughs> now, if you're not RVP, you're not getting no bonuses like that because you still focus on the goal. But that bonus came because a lot of folks working on the goal. And a few join the strategy. That's right. See, when here, you go to McDonald's, right? One of the fun things about McDonald's is this, right? You go there. You don't see the owner there. Because, see, the owner has something, and primary is the ambassador, the hopeful little guy. See, when you go to McDonald's, you go and you take your money from your pocket or your purse and you pay. You're not paying. You're paying the store number. But the owner owns a number. Go on there and say, what's the store number? And see, if the, every, if the owner has 10 stores, there are 10 different numbers. And each store has a value where he can sell that store number. But if you go to McDonald's, you go to Jack in the Box. All of them are numbered. Go to Whataburger. They're all numbered. There's a franchise number. Every Walmart has a number. That's why the Walmart family ain't there. They ain't there running the races. See, when you go, you pay the number. Now, you go to McDonald's. When you go there, and if you want one, you got to buy a number. And you say, well, look, I, now, if, if the folk that are winning big in McDonald's are the guys that understand the strategy, those ones that own the number. The guys that are making a living, they are, they, they are folks on the goal that are the, selling the burgers. So if I want to get free and I want to get on the strategy side, how much these numbers cost up in here? <laughs> yeah, so it's something about $1.2 million. And you got to reach back and rub your head and pull your glasses off. Tell you what, give me a number three with cheese. Because <laughs> <laughs> that barrier of entry is too high. And see, Prime America's the ambassador, the hopeful little guy. See, the car, if you go to McDonald's right now, if all the employees leave, will it work? No. You go to Walmart. If all the employees leave, will it work? No. If you go to Jack in the Box, all the employees leave, will it work? No. So the life of it is a team of people. See, in business, you either own a team as an employee or you create a team as an owner. And your position determines your wealth and your worth. So if the strength is a team, the, the reason why you can't go and buy a McDonald's because the burden of cost is tied up in the building. It's a million plus for the building. You got to buy the equipment, which is cost prohibitive. See, in Prime America, you don't have to worry about buying a building. You can't go buy a Walmart building. Because I ambitious you are. The cost, the barrier is too high. You, got, you can't buy all the supplies and take care of all payroll. The barrier entry is too high. So if the power is a team, see, Prime America, you come here, you take $99 in a dream. And you get your business number. 
You ain't got to buy no building. You don't have to buy no stove and oven, no heavy equipment and a lot of supplies. You get a number, $99 number. And you put a team together. All the employees at McDonald's, you go to whatever store number you go to, all the employees at that store, they attach to that store number. So when they at that store and they they, they bring in uh, good value, they're nice and all, and, and they, look, they come look at the value of that, that store and people go there because people are nice, they value it based on that number and all the employees are tied to that number. Now, when you go to McDonald's, they sell liquor at McDonald's. You know why? You got no liquor license. You sell liquor without no license. All right? So you get a number. You get a liquor license attached, you sell liquor through the number. See, in Prime America, you buy a business number. Now, we move life insurance. We move investments. So you just can't come so instead of life insurance, you get a life insurance number, a t license attached to your number. Now, you can move insurance through your number. You get an investment license. You move investments through your number. When you go, you, uh, you go to McDonald's, you don't open up and start selling food the same day. Got to get a food permit. Right. You come here, you get a permit to do prepaid legal and other non-licensed services attached to your number. Then you build a team around your number. And when that team has a vice president title attached to it and it's cash on $300,000 a year, you can sell it for eight to ten times cash flow. That's the valuation. So your job here is to get a number and build a team around your number. That's why our primary is the, uh, the ambassador of hope for little guy. You get the same benefits of a McDonald's, a Jack in the Box, and a Whataburger without all the heavy barrier of the building and all the other infrastructure, you put a team because none of those work without the team. Right. And so your team ain't going to work unless you have good mental hygiene. You're not going to see, if you go to McDonald's, you're paying folk out of your pocket. You're on a payroll. This is a volunteer army. And you can, if I was paying folk out of payroll, say, I'll, I'll pay you guys 20 bucks beer this morning. You don't come, you're fired. <laughs> but you don't get folks to come to volunteer army that way. They have to have good mental optimistic hygiene. They have to want to come. So if I'm in my car listening to some optimistic things, I'm excited. I want to find somewhere to express my optimism through. So you got to build a nexus in prime America is getting folk with a good mental hygiene, you pull them together. They begin to glue together. Because if they embrace this, they have good mental hygiene. And so here, if you want to build something, you got the benefits of McDonald's and all other companies as well. But you got it without the high barrier of entry. And we'll come and we'll, we'll disrespect and we'll minimize this opportunity. And your only job is to pull folks together, bring them in a room. The primary is the goal here, you, you build a crowd and you inspire the crowd. Sure, one, come in the room and you inspire. Them. Say, Josh, come get me excited, right? Come get me excited, Chris, right? You build a crowd and inspire a crowd. So when you get folks coming to your room, they have to show up and you inspire them. Fast social school, show up and inspire. Show up and inspire. You build a crowd, inspire a crowd. So if I want to bring somebody here, how do you bring value to the team? If the goal is to build a crowd, inspire a crowd, you got to be a part of the crowd. Will you show up? Showing up brings value. If you're not showing up, you're not bringing value. If you're not a client, you're not bringing value. So when you come here, you can't win in isolation. Life's a team sport. So if I'm on a team, ask yourself, am I bringing value? If you're not showing up on training Saturday morning, not come to our meeting, you're not bringing value. 
until you start bringing your, and your compensation will be attached to your value. And you find anyone to come here when you when you focus on the gold first, any McDonald's, you go to uh, Chick Fil A is a good example. Chick Fil A they organically grow from inside, and what they do they get somebody to come there, a kid coming work up front right, and he's real good, and he's very nice, and he and he's a uh, focus on the goal of the company to make the environment good. See, son, you manage the material. See, a manager is a pseudo owner. That's fake owner. <laughs> he has the responsibilities of an owner. They say, son, this is your store. He says, my store? This is your store, right? And so I want you to do, don't you call me when a little Joe don't show up. Who store this is my store? Your store, right? But you don't have your store money though, right? <laughs> you pay them, right? And your job is to come there and you take ownership and you become a manager. Because you treat it like it's your store. And at, at a, a Chick-fil-A, the cat family says, what we'll do, since you are doing a great job as a manager, we'll put you in an ownership program. It's a 50-50 split. Now, there's a whole lot of things. 50-50 ain't 50-50. Right? 50-50 <laughs> is like 50-10. Right? But if you look good on paper, right? All right? And uh, uh, I was just going to retract. I, I had a friend of mine many years ago. He opened up a, uh, a Fresh and Jover. Uh, and he had six of them. He said, Tony, man, because uh, I didn't see him in years. He was mentoring me when I was younger uh, in business. And he said, uh, hey, uh, uh, Tony, uh, uh, so what have you been doing, uh, Don? He said, man, i got six fresh and yogurt. I said, really? He said, yeah, well, you know, he said, come out to the airport, and I'll, I'll treat you, and we'll talk about it, right? So I went out to DFW, and we sit down and talk, and we had a great conversation. I said, how would you end up uh, uh, on it? He said, Tony, I got 51%. I put no money in. How you do that? What he did is... He leveraged his minority status. As a minority owner, they didn't have so many minority ownership to, to be in the airport, right? So he gave 51% on that. He said, but Tony, it ain't as sexy as it sounds. <laughs> See, it's 51% on paper. <laughs> because they put a lot of expenses in that 49, where they get a whole lot more than I'm getting, right? <laughs> All right? But on paper, it looks like 51%. But in reality, it's a whole lot less. Because they can enjoy, they can pay themselves a big salary on the other side and they can pull out off on the back side, right? And that's what Chick fil A does. I got a friend of mine who owns one of them and he said, I'm talking to you when he gave me how to my works. I'm like, man, thank God for primary. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you leave there, you get to leave with your, hopefully, your sanity. Because you can't sell nothing. <coughs> you leave, you don't think you own a Chick fil A if you want to. Say, I'm going to sell it. No, you're going to sell some sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> and you literally give you 50, I think you get $55, whatever the amount you give to, five, it's, five, it's just less than $1,000 you give to get part of the program, right? And when you leave, they give that back to you. And say, you can go. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> all right? All right? Wow. See, we, we under-respect primary. Wow. You come and you build something that has value that you can sell and you can wield. And you take $99 and get a seven figure lesson for $99. See, the highest reward for your labor, your toll, and what you get is what you become because you own the knowledge. You get more from Prime America than Prime America. You got 99 bucks. You got someone that will mentor you hands on. Prime America is a place of monetized mentorship. You come here, anytime you don't do anything big in life, right? Say, what separates a guy that makes worth three or four jobs and struggles, another guy that plays golf all day and leaving a Bentley, what is the difference? See, it's incented mentorship. Always ask yourself, ask your neighbor, who's mentoring you? Now who asked you who's mentoring you? Y'all watch you. Who's mentoring you? Who's mentoring you? You right now. <laughs> you good, right? right? <laughs> so you rise to the level of your mentorship. You go to McDonald's. Which they take take Starbucks, for instance. Right? You go to Starbucks. 
And the owner said, look here, son. Say, Pat, you're doing a great job as crew leader. So if you will mentor Tony to become crew leader, we'll make you manager. Now he's incented to mentor me, and I'm coachable. I listen. I learn what he teaches. I become a crew leader. Man, can go where his was. He become a manager. You rise to the level of your mentorship. Mm. Income is capped there. Mm. Say, Pat, you did a great job of mentoring Tony to be a crew leader. If you're a mentor, Tony, to become a manager, we'll make you area manager. Now, he's incented to mentor me. Mm -hmm. Become a manager. So I listen. And he's incented going to get a raise. So I listen. I become a manager. Income go where his was. Your income cap at your mentorship. He become area manager. Say, son, you did a great job, Pat, and Tony become area manager. If you and your man become area manager, he'll make you a franchise owner. Now he's incented. Mention me become area manager. Man, come go where yours was, Pat. You become a franchisee. You rise to the level of your mentorship. Mm -hmm. Say, so you did a great job, and Tony become a manager, uh, area manager. Show him how to become a franchisee. He will make your uh, um, give you five locations. Now he's incented in. Benjamin should come become a uh, franchisee. Man, come go where yours was. You become a five owner franchisee. Mm -hmm. You just go to level your mentorship. See, some of you have been mentored out of your own thinking. Mm -hmm. And your income is stuck right where you are. Because <laughs> you go as high as your mentorship. Wow. See, primary is a place of monetized mentorship. We have an incentive to help you go forward. Because when you grow, we grow. And what happens when you become an RVP, you say now, and when you're doing the company strategy, it ain't just becoming an RVP, it's creating RVPs. Because now you want to bring other folks to RVP too. When you do that, now you're working on the company's bigger strategy to become SNSD. Mm -hmm. You rise to the level of your mentorship. So are you being mentored? Then who are you mentoring? In that scenario y'all gave, every step I went forward, I can bring someone else to where I was. Right. So primarily the place of becoming district and creating districts. Right. So you got to become one and create one. Right. So what have you become so far? Now you created somebody behind you. Because you got to go to bring somebody forward also. It's monetized mentorship. And see, sometimes we come to Prime America. I mean, the place is easy to come here and not really have the right perspective. Mm -hmm. And we take so much of life for granted. You know the most energizing thing? You know what's better than black coffee? You know what's better than a, a five-hour monster energy drink? <laughs> It's gratitude. Ooh. Gratitude. That's a self-producing energy. Gratitude. You can't have gratitude and be uh, down at the same time. Right. That's right. It's gratitude. So how much gratitude do you share daily? How you just, just to be thankful? Just be thankful. You know, there, there, there is... There are 7 billion folk on this planet right now. Less than 4% are in America. You know, the chance you being in America, I mean, uh, almost zero. At this hour, in the chance you just being human, there is a 400 trillion chance you know, for you to just be, 400 trillion to one just be human. You got the birds, you got every, all these creatures out of here, right? And you're human. 400 trillion to one. And then if you're less than 4% of the folk in America right now, you know how many folk in America are insane? You know how many folk in America right now have been falsely accused and imprisoned for crazy stuff? I'm going to tell you one, one, one story thing happened to me a few uh, years ago. Uh, I get my shoe shine downtown. And the guy, I, I, I give him a shoe shine, he called me and said, Tony, come here right now, right? I said, what? What's up, Mark? Come here, man, you got to come here right now, right? So what? Some guy said you were stealing watches. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I said, what? He said, some guy with a Versace shirt still in watches. I said, I, I can go to a Versace shirt still in watches, right? And so I go straight over there, right? He said, the guy was passing out CDs and doing it. Now, I'm accused of wearing a Versace shirt. All right? All right? And I'm accused of passing CDs out. Right? So I'm guilty as charged in that scenario. So it gave me a newfound respect for both this falsely accused. I went and sat at, uh, at, at, uh, uh, at uh, you know where the skating ring is, that's, that's the one main place? Uh, the shine guy said, I sat there, I'm still sat there, he said, Tony, three years over there, right, security guard. I said, tell him to come here, all right? He came, and uh, he said, this is Tony here, right? He said, uh, he said, wow. He said, wow, man, uh, we caught a guy yesterday, looks just like you, had a CD in his hand. He said, I'll get the guy's picture when he got his guy's picture off the, uh, uh, the, the uh, security account, all right? I mean, the chill went down my spine. See, I had went to uh, the, the building yet the day before, and I gave that guy a CD. The guy, he got looked like me. I mean, the guy, he, I mean, uh, it was chilling, all right? And he had a CD in his hand, all right? And what happened, I had walked down that day before and I, when I, uh, I met the guy in the building, gave him a CD, right? And I walked down, I, I gave the security guard a CD. So they saw me with a Versace shirt, they gave him a head CD in my hand. So when they caught the guy, he had a CD in his hand. He said it was his CD, right? And the guy looked like me. So and they were thinking, okay, and you, I couldn't have created a word game. He gave, I, kept, I, kept, I kept, kept the guy's picture with me for uh, about a year or so, right? Because it was a reminder. I mean, I, I, I couldn't have created the guy. Look, I mean, I looked at it. I, I would have thought it was me. All right? <laughs> all right? He had bald head. Uh, I mean, you know, the only thing was the guy was a little, uh, look, he had a little, he had a receding hairline back here. That little <laughs> shade there, right there. That wasn't me. But he could have easily, if you didn't know me, you could have said, well, it looks like a real good, right? But it, it showed me how easy it is to be falsely accused. See, you are, you are a law-abiding citizen. A lot of folks sitting in prison right now are falsely accused. So, we take a lot of things for granted. I mean, have your sound mind. To be in a place where you can exercise your dream if you want to. We take it for granted. What last thing you think is thank God for being able to walk? Right, that's right. Or it's just being able to talk. We take so much for granted. I was talking to a guy just a couple, uh, about a week ago, having to Google uh, people that were physical deformities. I said, dude, you're arrogant. See, a lot of times we say, I gotta go and close a sale, I gotta go build my business. No, you get to go That's right. close a sale. You get to go build a business. See, some folks want to, they don't get to. So there is less than 5% of folk in America. So the chance of you having this opportunity, I mean, is minuscule. Minuscule. Any folk come to Prime America, don't even get licensed. Right. How many come here and never close a sale? Right. And they come here and they, 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 they're so uh, easily persuaded by others that they, they, they don't lead, they follow negative people. Right. Well, my brother won't do this, so I'm quitting too. You're following negativity. <laughs> That's right. You're supposed to lead That's them right. into optimism. And we come and we take it for granted. You, you start writing a poem right now. You die, I don't want to finish the poem, but you. You're the most unique of all of God's creations. See, what stirs your heart, that's God's gift to you. Mm-hmm. You give to him that's completed. And we'll come in life and we'll take so much for granted. One of the last thing you say, man, thank you, Lord. Thank you. For giving me health and strength. And I tell you, you go to people go to church. They say, oh man, the preacher didn't make me excited. 
you're going for the wrong reason. Your job is to take a praise offering to church. So you take a praise offering. Now everyone is taking a praise offering and celebrating God. God inhabits the praises of his people. See, the joy comes, you taking a praise offering, giving, not coming just trying to take. So you come to Prime America, you come to I mean, you come in and bring some celebration. Right. You come, well, they didn't make me excited. <laughs> or you come in to help create excitement. Right. What's your value proposition? Mm. Are you bringing value? We spend our whole life sometimes. And you come with some of you guys been there a little while and you're all down in the dumps <laughs> because you, you're waiting for one day. One day it's going to be big. See, happiness is inside of anticipation. That's what happiness is. See, we, you've been a wire, right, Josh? Man, we so excited. I can't wait to get to a wire. Man, I'm going to get to a wire. I can't wait to get to a wire. And we stand in line, checking in. Where are you going, Pat? Go, go, go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, Pat? That is a common statement, right or right or wrong, right? So the joy is the journey. That's right. Getting there. Oh my God. That's where the fun is. Right. You watch an athlete. That he spent his whole life fighting to win the Olympics. He get a gold medal. And they interview him. They say, how does it feel? It ain't hit me yet. Because yeah. <laughs> right. right. see, the joy is the journey. Right. Talk to him before that he's excited about being I'm be Olympia, man. I got a chance. He's full of language in. Because happiness is an anticipation. <laughs> and sometimes you never live. You're always wanting to live. Mm. And you miss the life. What's crazy about life, there are no stored up minutes. Mm -hmm. No rollover minutes. <laughs> you use them or you lose them. Go to ATT. You don't do you lose, you or you lose. <laughs> And your life is that way. So your whole life, you waiting to one day get there. I never forget it. Uh, uh, in 01, we were, I, we were about to go 200 grand in income. I said, when I go 200 grand, give me a Rolex watch. Man, I'm excited. I'm going to the Rolex store. I'm not going to I'm going to have a Rolex on me. I'll be you live like you, Josh, right? All right? And I'm excited. I mean, I'm, it, it was full of joy. And when I got it, now I'm looking at something else. <laughs> See, the happiness is anticipation. Yeah. You want to buy your, your dream house. Yeah. You can't wait. Well, I'm going to get my house. I'm going to get my house. You're all excited. When you get it, you have to cut the grass. <laughs> <laughs> See, happiness is an anticipation. Right. And we missed living, waiting to one day live. You trying to get the RVP? One, I got a head old dog named Red. When Red Red would hear a car, his ears just lay down, right? And he 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 started running, right? He running, man. He and he chase that car, chase that car, and the car stopped. He stopped and look around. <laughs> See, Red enjoyed the chase. See, happiness is in the chase. And you running toward RVP, you get it. How does it feel? It ain't hit me yet. That's it. See, the joy is the journey. Josh trying to get the few, uh, 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 SNSD a few months ago. It was exciting. Trying to get there, right? Now he got there. Okay, now, okay, now, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Happiness is an anticipation. That's right. Are you missing living, waiting to one day live? Okay. You got to enjoy the journey. How much are you enjoying your time now? Building toward RVP. Building your business. <laughs> the fun part is now. You go to hunting with, with, with uh, Mike. The fun is the hunt. Not just to shoot. It's the hunt. Because once you got the game out, you know, the, the happiness is in the hunt. So as you hunt toward RVP, are you having fun? Are you enjoying the journey? 
or you're waiting to one day get there. When you get there, you're going to say, man, it ain't hit me yet. Or you're living right now. See, every day is a life in miniature. You live it like when you get up in the morning, the sun rises. When a baby is born, the sun rises on his life. And when he died, the sun sets. See, life, a day is a life in miniature. A lot of times folks say, well, you know, man, uh, 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 you see a guy commit suicide. I heard uh, uh, one of my guys on my team, they uh, uh, went by uh, uh, last week and a friend of theirs committed suicide. Now, as I understand, he committed suicide in the backyard with a swimming pool. You know, folks want a swimming pool? He got one. Since your perspective. He committed suicide, got three young children. How many kids want, people want kids? He got them. But he wasn't exercising gratitude. You can have it all, but do you understand it all? Are you thankful? Are you grateful? See, you have this in a possession, see your interpretation of what you got. How do you interpret where you are right now? Are you thankful for the person you're becoming? See, the highest reward for a man laboring this tall is not what he gets, it's what he becomes. Because your own knowledge is the person you become. That's the value. They ain't just getting it. You're going to win the lottery? It's normally your biggest curse. Because you don't grow into the income. You just get the income. So when you get it without growing, it's a curse. When you grow into it, you see money is a poor master, but a great servant. If I grow into it now, it serves me. If I just get it, it masters me. You take a, a, a two-year-old child and attach him to a, a full-grown Great Dane, he is too small to control what's outside of him. He'll drag him around like 10 cent a month. He come a full-grown man. Now I put him to that great day. Now he can control what he's bigger than what's outside of him. So if you got a two-figure interior and a seven-figure exterior, you're like a two-year-old child attached to a full-grown great day. Mm-hmm. The money outside of you is bigger than what's inside of you. It's going to drag you around like a 10-cent month. That's why you got to enjoy the journey. The journey is growing to become. Now when you become it, you harmonize with it. It becomes a great servant. It's not your master. I heard this guy once. He, uh, uh, he was a, a builder. And the guy, you know, uh, I mean, he had a fantastic imagination. But in life, you can always choose pessimism or optimism. There are no wealthy victims. You take this, this cup here, if it's half full, half of water here is half full or half empty. Have you viewed it? You're right. See, it's half empty, that's pessimism. Oh, it's bad. Half full, you're right. Obviously, I'm on my way. So he is a builder, and the owner was arrogant. Arrogant. He started listening to outside voices. Man, the owner don't respect you. He don't trust your ideas. He don't pay you right. He was the first one or last one to leave always. But his friends are getting in his ear and say, man, he's treating you bad, treating you bad, treating you bad. And you find you can start getting better or you start getting better. And it depends on who you're listening to. Listen to a bunch of negative folk, you start getting better. That's why you got to keep your mind washed in optimism. And get, keep good mental hygiene. His mental hygiene was bad, so he like, listen to negative folk, they all were mentally musty, he's going to get mentally musty with them. Say, me don't respect you, man, he didn't see that. He started saying, you're right. You're right. He never gave you a raise. He misusing you, he treating you bad. He started getting angry, and as he started getting bitter, the owner began to get better. And so he got close to retirement, and the owner started letting his conscience really get the best of him. See, I never treated John right. 
I never gave him his justice. He started thinking, how can I make up for all this wrong I've done? So he called John into his office. Look at John. I'm getting ready to retire, John. And uh, I've had a good career here. And we got an owner would always have his, his office done out in a plush fashion. And he never treated the employees good. But everything he had was just opulent. And the owner said, look here, John, I want you one more thing for me. I want you to build me a home. But I, I don't want to be an average home. Because I'm getting ready to retire. I want you to be a monument to this company's legacy. What this company still for, I want you to build a house that will represent what we still for over all these years. So people, generations to come, will see what we did. Make it plush. See, I don't surprise. No expense. I, my, my, my checkbook is blank. Get the best contractors, get the best of everything, the best equipment. And I want you to use your own. I'm not going to get involved in it. You make it to level your imagination. Now, John was a great builder. Was always, you know, a lot of accolades about how good he was, how vast his imagination was, how, how, how he was so meticulous in the fine details of getting things done in a quality way. But he has started getting bitter. <laughs> Bad mental hygiene. And he called, and he's got a sneaky idea, said, I'm going to get back at this lousy, no good on. Mm -hmm. So he called his, some people he knew, said, you do uh, asphalt work. I'm going to pay you to give me somebody that's, that's unskilled, that can make it look good, but ain't good. I want to break down in two years. I want the pipes to be burst in two years, right? <laughs> now, I'm going to give you an extra money. You put it in your pocket, right? Uh, and you go go to the salvage yard, get the worst equipment. Just make it look, make it just look like it's okay, right? And uh, make sure it's got termites in it and that sort of thing, right? And the plumbing <laughs> it, right? Because I want to make sure in two years that I saw it bursting and we're going to show opulence. <laughs> and so, you know how you squander stuff. You got, if you, if you had, had somebody on somebody's job, you're still in paper clips, you're still in stuff, right? Because it ain't yours. Right? Yep. He had that mindset. <laughs> right? And so he, he put positive money, squandered money, you, you, you don't respect what you don't own. Right. And so what happens, he started doing, he, he got, he got the, the worst uh, uh, guys that can do the foundation. He got guys, I want you guys to make sure when you put the roof in, I want to leak. It got to look good for a moment though, right? Give me some contract, going to charge you the most money for the largest work, right? Just make it look good on the server. I want it to leak in two years, or so point water on everybody's head in two years, right? <laughs> so he had it, and he put money, squandered the money he got, and, just, and, and, and uh, really ran the bill up to, uh, uh, and made it look good, but it wasn't good. And so he, and the owner called him and said, John, when are you going to be ready uh, by next Tuesday? See, I'll be ready by next Monday. He said, good. <laughs> And, and John walked out, he sneaked me, I'm going to get this sucker now. He, he think he got his last half on me, I got his butt, right? And uh, they came Tuesday. He said, John, meet me at the house. John said, I'll meet you at the house. <laughs> he, said, now, he said, John, I drove out, I saw it, man. My kids are going to know for generations to come what we stood for. Excellent. Man, you did a great job. Man, you did a great job, right? John said, I sure did. Hey, they're going to know what you stood for, for sure. And Tuesday came, and John got on. He, he headed to uh, go down to the home, and he said, man, I, I, I'm getting the last laugh. When he topped the hill, he saw balloons. And he saw folk out there. He saw even the mayor there. And he got angry. He said, this joke ain't telling him there'll be no, no celebration here for his celebrating his arrogance, his butt return, right? He's arrogant. So he topped the hill and he went over the hill and got there and he was mad, just speaking through his teeth, cursing him out. When he got in the car, he said, how you doing, uh, boss? You know how y'all do when you get in front of your owner, you, you know, you've been cursing him out. <laughs> and the owner grabbed him and put his arm around and said, John, he grabbed the mic and said, hey guys, you know, this right here, this guy here, is a quintessential example of excellence. Mm -hmm. For 40 years, I have not treated this man right. I didn't give him the raises he was due. I didn't give him the time that he deserved. I didn't pay him right. 
And man, after I began to mature, I started really feeling bad. We have kids that are the same age. And I wanted some way to, I told said, John, I want you to make sure that generations to come, that people know what excellence look like. I wasn't talking about me, John. I was really talking about you. I, I let you make the house to your level of imagination. To your excellence. Because, John, I didn't want a house for me. I got enough. I want your kids to know the man you represent. <laughs> the man you are. And the value you bring. John, these keys are for you. And John started crying like a baby. He said, man, if you would just have told me this was, house was mine. I would not have cut corners. I would have done my best if I had known it was just mine. And see, some of y'all in here, you got your solution number. You think you're building a house with Bill Arender, Craig Morgan, Josh Huffman. You're building a house for you. Your kids, your grandkids going to see what you stood for. If the house is falling apart and it won't stand, this house is for you. So I hope if you're here, stop playing around. You're building a legacy for your family that can and should stand the test of time. Put your heart in it. Put your soul in. Make sure you manage your mental hygiene. And build something that your family will be proud of. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Give Tony one more hand. Absolutely incredible, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.